Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to clone or copy a piece of clothing that you already have in your closet. This is a really fun and easy way to DIY your own clothes, so let's get started. To do this DIY, you'll need a garment from your closet that you want to copy. It can be anything, but I'd recommend starting with something simple if you're a beginner. The piece that I'm going to be copying today is this little cropped tank top. It's really old and I've gotten a lot of wear out of it over the years. I mostly wear it when I'm exercising or as a layering piece under sweaters, and I'm thinking it would be useful to have a few more of these in my closet, so I'm going to use this one as a pattern to make another one. You'll also need a fabric that's similar to your original. So my tank top is made from a stretchy knit material, and to make my copy, I'm also going to be using a knit material with a similar amount of stretch. I'll also be using tracing paper and a pencil. Alternatively, you can trace your garment directly onto your fabric with something like fabric chalk, but I like to put it on paper so that I can reuse the pattern if I like the result. Finally, you'll need all of your regular sewing supplies, like your sewing machine, fabric scissors, pins, a measuring tape, and thread that matches your fabric. Because I'm sewing with knit fabric for this, I'm also going to be using my serger, and if you don't have a serger or overlocker, you can use the zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine to sew with knits. To get started, I'm going to make my pattern by tracing my original garment onto my pattern paper. To make sure my pattern is symmetrical, I'm going to fold my tank top in half and trace the pattern on the fold. So I'm making sure that my pattern is perfectly flat and that all the lines are straight, and then I'm just tracing all the way around my pattern piece with my pencil, and I'm just roughly sketching to start, and then I can straighten out the lines and tidy it up afterwards. Next, I'm going to take a ruler and add one centimeter or three eighths of an inch of seam allowance where I need it, which for this garment is at the side seams and the shoulder seams. I'm also adding an extra 2.5 centimeters or one inch at the bottom for the hem. To save paper, I combined both the front and back pieces into one pattern piece and just drew in the front neckline. Finally, the original top has binding around the neckline and armholes, so I'm going to take away some seam allowance from those areas because I don't actually need that much fabric there. So I'm taking away 6 millimeters or about a quarter inch, which will still leave me with enough seam allowance to attach the binding. Once the pattern piece is complete, I can cut it out with regular craft paper scissors and use it as a template to cut out my fabric. So now we can set our original garment aside and cut our pieces out of the fabric. I'm cutting one piece each on the fold for the front and back. Thank you. 
To cut the front neckline, I'm first using my carbon transfer paper and a tracing wheel to trace the line onto my fabric, and then I can cut it out without cutting into my paper pattern. Next, we can move on to actually assembling our garment. And this will obviously involve different steps depending on what kind of garment you're duplicating. For my tank top, the construction is fairly simple. I first need to attach the front and back pieces with right sides together at the shoulder and side seams. I used my serger to sew all four seams at my one centimeter seam allowance and then pressed the seam allowances towards the back. At this point, it's a good idea to try on your garment and make sure it's looking and fitting how you want so that if you need to, you can make adjustments before moving on. I tried mine on and found the neckline was a little bit off, so I'm just gonna straighten it out with some small cuts. And I'll also make the same adjustments to my pattern piece. Now I need to do the binding for the neckline and armholes, so I'm using my measuring tape to measure the pattern and see how long I need to make my binding strips. For this calculation, I don't want to include the seam allowances on the back and front pieces since those are already taken away by the time I'm attaching the binding. So I'm measuring the armhole and front and back necklines without the seam allowance, and then multiplying those each by two to get the full edge circumference. Since I'm working with a knit fabric, to make sure the binding lies flat, I also want to make it a little bit shorter than the full length of the edge that I'm attaching it to. In this case, I decided to make my binding strips about 5cm shorter than the edges, and I also didn't add any additional seam allowance, so in total they ended up being about 7cm shorter. In hindsight, this was maybe a little bit too short, as you'll see I did end up getting some puckering at the edges, so in the future I think I would add seam allowance and then it would be perfect. I'm also making my binding strips 4 centimeters wide. The first step with the binding pieces is to stitch them at the short ends with right sides together so that they form a circle. One tip that I learned when folding a binding like this in half is to clip into the middle of the seam allowance and fold them each in opposite directions, so that way you don't get as thick of a bump at the seam. I did decide to do a slightly different method of binding the edges than my original garment, so instead of wrapping the binding around the edge, I'm going to be actually folding my binding in half lengthwise and using my serger to attach it to the raw edge in a circle. Then I'll flip the seam allowance to the inside and top stitch it, so it's really similar to how the collar on a crew neck t-shirt would be finished. Because my binding is slightly shorter than the edge I'm attaching it to, I'm stretching the binding as I'm sewing. This proved to be pretty finicky as the knit fabric kept rolling up at the edges, but I just took my time and tried to attach it as neatly as possible.
Once the binding was attached, I flipped the finished seam allowance to the inside. Then I used a twin needle on my sewing machine to top stitch the seam allowance and secure it down. I love using a twin needle on knits. It adds a really professional finish and I found it actually helped smooth out the puckering as well. Using a twin needle is really easy. You just need to swap it out for your regular needle and use two spools of thread instead of one. Most machines have an attachment exactly for this purpose. You can thread the top threads both through the machine as you normally would, and same with the bobbin, and then just use your regular straight stitch settings. It honestly works like magic and ends up with a beautiful stretchy finish. So here is what the finished neckline looks like, and then I just needed to repeat those same steps to bind the armholes. Finally, I'm giving the top a good press and then pressing up the bottom to do the hem. I turned it up once by 1cm and then again by about 1.5cm, pinned everything in place and top stitched again using my twin needle. And with that, the DIY version of my top was complete. I think it turned out really similar to the original. Here they are side by side again for a comparison. So again, here is what the original top looks like on. And here is the duplicate top. I love how this turned out. It's so comfortable and the fit is perfect. I can already tell that this is going to become a wardrobe staple for me, and now that I have the pattern, I can make as many as I like. So I think this is a really great way to make more of the clothing that you love and wear the most, especially if it's something you can't find anymore. So let me know in the comments which of your clothes you'd like to clone using this method. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that you picked up some tips and tricks. If you did, please don't forget to like it and also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more like this in the future. Thanks for watching!